<clears throat> interpreting graphs. So we know that a graph is a way of showing a relation, one of many ways, tables of values, ordered pairs, words, equations, etc. And a graph is a, a picture of the data. So in this case, a student's energy level is related to the time of day. In this case, this will be their energy level, and this will be the time of day. And we want to come up with a story. Describe these changes. So we could see, well, just waking up, and then it kind of peaks after you've woken up. And then as you go through the morning, let's say your energy level drops. You get lunch break, you have some lunch, energy level goes back up, dips again towards the end of school, climbs, hey, look, school's over. So energy level climbs back up again. You know, and we have supper somewhere in there and then drops off through the evening to low energy and you go to bed and then you repeat the cycle. So come up with an explanation for these changes and that's just exactly what we've done. So wake up, high energy. I'm just going to pause and write the rest of it out. And so there's uh, the written explanation to go with that. Here's something with a little more, we can put some numbers to this. The amount of fuel left in a car's gas tank is related to the time drive, to the time during a driving trip. The graph consists of six line segments. Explain the significance of each line segment. So we can see we start with, um, first thing to do is figure out what's the scale here. So it looks like tens, and this scale along here, time is in hours, and that's ones. So from A to B, we start with 70 liters, and in three hours, we have dropped to 40 liters. So driving used, uh, we went from 70 to 40, so we used 30 liters in a total of three hours. From B to C, you can see that the volume hasn't changed, so it looks like we stopped for an hour. Stopped for one hour. C to D, back on the road again, we've gone from 40 liters down to 10, and we did that in three hours. So driving used 30 liters in three hours. D to E, now all of a sudden the gas went from 10 liters to 70 liters, so we must have filled up. So it stopped and added 60 liters of fuel. And there is some time, right, because this is not quite on seven, and then this is on seven. And then we're back on the road, we're driving, and we used uh, 10, 20 liters in one hour. So we may have been driving faster, we were going through fuel at a greater rate. And then here in the course of two hours, we used 10 liters. So I used 10 liters in two hours. And we get that information from the dependent variable, the volume of fuel depends on the time that we've taken and each segment is expressed in terms of a volume of fuel used over a time interval. The Hikers Club went for a hike in a park. They traveled at a constant speed and stopped for a break. They then walked back towards their starting point at a slower speed than they started. Close to the end of the hike, they walked at a constant speed that was faster than their initial pace. Draw a graph that describes the distance the hikers are from their starting point over time. So at time zero, we're going to be at the starting point. They traveled at a constant speed, so that's going to be a straight line, right? The distance will vary with time, so here we go, constant speed. They stopped for a break, okay, so if they stop, then their distance doesn't change. So there's the break, that's supposed to be a flat line. Uh, they then walked back towards their starting point at a slower speed. So a slower speed means that 
we're going to cover, you know, this is the distance we're looking to cover, and we want to spend more time than this particular segment took in time. So we need to drag it out a bit, right, make this a longer amount of time. So we're going to head back and make it take a longer amount of time. So there we are going slower. Close to the end of the hike, they walked at a constant speed that was faster than their initial pace. So let's take this down and then we're going to go faster. So, you know, we, we run the last little bit is what we could be doing here. Oh, that probably should be a little bit angled. You know, it's, that's almost an instantaneous change. So let's continue this out a bit and then make it steeper there. Okay, so that's, remember, and what we're relating is distance to time, and when you, you move at a constant uh, speed, then you cover the same amount. So in this time interval, we cover that distance. You cover the same distance in each time interval. Draw a graph to describe each situation. Your height is related to your age. Well, first off, you start going pretty quick. Then you slow down and keep growing. Maybe you go through a growth spurt. And then it kind of levels off. And, you know, maybe you get old. And uh, osteoporosis or something sets in. You can actually sort of shrink down your height. Your height above the ground as you ride on a Ferris wheel is related to the time. So let's say we get on at the bottom. We rise up to the top. And we come back down to the bottom. And we rise up to the top. And we come back down to the bottom. And we rise up to the top and so on. The time it takes you to walk to school is related to how fast you walk to school. Now notice this time is now the dependent. Time depends on the speed. So if I'm moving at a fast speed, it's going to be a low amount of time. And if I'm going at a slow speed, it's going to be a high amount of time. So this is what the graph is going to look like. Low speed, lots of time, fast speed, very little time, and then in between speed, uh, in between times. Next page, select the graph below that describes each situation the best. The temperature of water in a bathtub is related to the number of minutes that have passed since you filled the tub. So we know that the temperature will go down and then it should kind of level off, right, if it reaches room temperature. So I'm thinking E. Uh, could also be B. Temperature goes down. Let's see if something else relates better. The amount of gasoline remaining in a car's tank is related to how long it's being driven at a constant speed. Okay, I think B is a better one for that. So we're going to go B here, and then we'll go E here. The altitude of an airplane traveling from Calgary to Vancouver is related to time. Well, you got to climb up, you're going to cruise, and then you're going to go and land. So let's go with D. The cost of parking at an airport parking garage is related to the number of hours parked. This is actually called a step function, right? So we pay this amount, and then you step up, you go to the next level. So it's $1.25 an hour, let's say. So you pay $1.25. As soon as you're over an hour, you pay $2.50. As soon as you're over two hours, you pay $3.75. That's called a step function. The cost of flying to Vancouver is related to the number of people in the family. Well, this has to be discrete. So, you know, we can't have a continuous line. So we say one person costs this, two people, so on. It's a constant amount that it's going up. The amount of water in a small swimming pool is related to how long the water has been running in. So water is going to go up over time, the amount, and that is F. Okay, so we're looking at the graph that best fits a given situation. Three different vases are filled with a constant flow of water from a tap. The graphs show the water level in each vase as it relates to the time the water runs are shown below. Sketch a possible vase in the box for each of the graphs above. So if we look here, as time goes on, the water level is going up at the same amount, which says that this is probably fairly cylindrical. So as time goes, we add water. 
then it starts increasing, which means that it's going to probably shape up like this. So it's going to narrow down. <clears throat> so as time goes on, if we're still filling at the same rate, then the vase is going to fill that much faster. And you know, once you reach the top, then that's the amount of water that it holds. So the water level can go no higher. This one starts out the same, but once it reaches a certain point, then it slows down, which means the vase must get wider. So, you know, we've got a basically cylindrical vase here, so the water's rising, and then this vase flares out like this, so that the water level will rise slower as the water pours in, it has more volume to fill increasing. The graphs below show how much it costs to purchase food items. Give an example of a food item that could be represented by each graph and explain why each particular example fits the graph. Well, I'm going to go with this. This is discrete. So the food item could be like, uh, you know, cans of, uh, I don't know, what do I like? cans of beans, right? No cans cost no money. One can costs a certain amount. Two cans is double that. Three cans is triple that. And it's discrete, right? You can't buy one and a half cans of beans. And this could be the bulk bin. So bulk uh, chocolate powder. So it's possible to have any quantity. I can have one kilo or half a kilo or 700 grams or 652.1 grams, etc. Right, and the cost will increase at a constant amount. They just charge you so much per hundred grams, but it's uh, an amount that goes up and is not discrete because we can have any uh, any weight or quantity of bulk chocolate powder. And that is that for interpreting graphs. And now it's your turn, textbook and questions. And again, um, as with any of our staff, follow the outline very carefully because uh, we do jump about in the book in the questions that we ask you to do.